Hi, my name is Gokul Narayan and I'm the lead faculty at the Asian School of Cyber Laws. In this video, we're going to be talking about a very basic and elementary concept of law, that of differentiating between civil legislations and penal legislations, or what is more commonly referred to as civil law and penal law. Is there a difference between the two? What is the difference between the two? What is the intention of the legislature for drafting these legislations? Let's dive into these questions with a few examples. Let's presume that I have borrowed your cell phone to make a phone call. And one of my friends comes and greets me from the back and pats me. And that results in the phone slipping out of my hand, falls down and breaks. Now, I borrowed your cell phone, which basically means there is a loss caused to you, although I did not intend to cause this loss. Let's take another example. Let's presume that I borrow your phone with the intention of damaging it because you owe me some money. So I take your phone. I pretend to make a phone call and I actually drop it purposely and break or damage your phone. What is the difference between situation one and situation two? Let us try and understand the difference between civil law and penal law with the help of these examples. Civil law and penal law basically differ in the perspective with which the legislation has created these legislations. Civil law has been created specifically to address all issues that the victim of a particular incident faces. On the other hand, the flip side is too true for penal law. Penal law has been created with the intention of addressing the person who is the perpetrator of a crime or an offense referred generally to as the wrongdoer. So civil law talks about the victim. Penal law talks about the wrongdoer. Civil law actually talks about compensating the victim for the loss that the victim has suffered. So the purpose of civil law therefore becomes to reinstate or bring back the victim to a state as close as possible to prior to happening of the incident or before the incident actually happened. On the other hand, penal law's purpose is very different. It is to punish the wrongdoer for an act which has been done by him or her, which was against the rules which have been laid down. And this is done through the idea of imprisonment, which basically curtails your freedom of movement, or fine, which is a penalty which is paid to the state. Now, here it will be very relevant to point out that although fine and compensation both result in payment of money by the person who's caused the loss, the difference lies in the fact that in most cases, fines which are paid are paid to the state. And in civil cases, the compensation which is paid is always paid to the victim, even though in both cases, the person who's causing the actual loss or damage is the individual who's paying the fine or the compensation. The recipient of such compensation or fine is different in civil and penal cases. In civil cases, the recipient of such compensation becomes the victim. And in penal cases, the recipient of the fine generally becomes the state. So please remember, Civil law addresses the victim and provides him compensation for the loss that the victim has suffered. On the other hand, penal law talks about the wrongdoer and punishes him or her with imprisonment and fine. Now let us address one of the most important points of distinction between civil legislations and penal legislation and that of the guilty mind, the intention with which an act has been done, which is also referred to sometimes as mens rea. Now let's take example number one, where I borrowed your phone and because of a friend coming and patting my back, I inadvertently dropped the mobile phone on the ground and thereby damaged it. I had no intention of causing you loss. But in civil cases, intention becomes an irrelevant substance, which basically means since the legislation is primarily looking only at compensating the victim, to the extent of the loss that the victim has suffered, the intention of the wrongdoer becomes irrelevant because the quantum of compensation does not increase or decrease based on the intention of the person who's committing the offense. Sorry, based on the intention of the individual committing the wrong. On the other hand, 
in penal cases, the intention becomes absolutely relevant and important. Because without a guilty mind, it is not possible to punish a person for a crime or an offense. Please remember this, however. We are talking about general principles of law and exceptions to all these cases always exist. The next point of differentiation between these two legislations is the court's perspective. In civil cases, the court looks at the balance of probability, which basically means between the victim and the wrongdoer, who suffers more and therefore who deserves the compensation more. Because very rarely do we find a situation in which the entire fault lies with one party. And therefore, the court considers the balance of probability to decide who should be given compensation and the extent and the quantum of such compensation. On the other hand, penal law looks at the concept of beyond reasonable doubt. Now, what does this mean? Beyond reasonable doubt means that the judge who is passing an order or a judgment in a penal case has to be convinced of the guilt of the offender beyond reasonable doubt. Which basically means that the defense merely has to create doubt in the mind of the judge to be able to either escape conviction or reduce the sentence that is given. So, the possibility of proving an offense in a criminal case or a penal case becomes hinged on the idea of reasonable doubt and the prosecution needs to prove the case beyond such reasonable doubt. And on the other hand, in a civil case, the court is merely looking at the balance of probability and therefore considering who has suffered more of a loss between the parties who are present before it. And last but not the least, civil legislations can be applied retrospectively. On the other hand, penal legislations can be applied only prospectively. What does this mean? Civil legislations can basically be applied from a date even prior to today. So, for example, if a civil legislation needs to be brought into existence, it can be brought into existence from 2017 onwards. But a penal legislation, on the other hand, can be brought into existence only from a date in the future. Because here you are curtailing the freedom of individuals and that can be done only in the future or prospectively. Now to look at examples, I'm sure you will have a question as to how can a civil legislation be applied retrospectively. The basic uh, principle that you can look at is the application of certain principles of patent law which were implemented to ensure that pharmaceutical companies basically come into India way back in the 1990s, although the legislation which was being changed, came into force only in the year 2005. Have a look at this to clarify your doubts. Now let us look at all these points of differentiation in the context of the examples that I'd given you. Civil law looks at the victim to compensate him or her for the loss that he or she has suffered, in which the guilty mind of the wrongdoer becomes irrelevant, the case needs to look at the balance of probability and can be retrospectively applied. Now, in terms of the examples that I had given, what I'd like to clarify to all of you is that a case is not civil or penal. The law applicable to it becomes civil or penal, which basically means in the same case, there can be both civil as well as penal legislations that can be involved. The civil legislation will merely look at the victim. On the other hand, the penal legislation will address the wrongdoer. So it is not a situation which can be civil or penal. It is the legislation which becomes penal or civil. Coming back to the examples that I've given you, situation number one, if the intention of the legislation is to compensate the victim for the loss that the victim has suffered, then you look at civil legislation. If the intention of the legislation is to punish the wrongdoer for the wrong that the person has done, then it's a penal legislation. Basically meaning thereby that both these legislations have the ability to coexist in the same case. Although the judicial system in India warrants that one case be taken up after the other. And generally in such situations, the criminal cases are taken up first 
because the proof required in a criminal case is higher and then the civil cases are taken on thereafter. I hope this clarifies your issue of the basic difference between civil legislation and penal legislations. If you have other examples that you'd like to share with us or have other points of differentiation between civil and penal legislations, please feel free to comment below and share your knowledge. Thank you so much for watching this video.